One of our favorite days on the farm is when we come down here to find that we have new piglets. This is our second litter of piglets. guys were born five days ago so they are super new and we were gonna go over five tips we have for you on raising healthy piglets and what to do in those first few days the first thing you want to do is make sure those piglets are dry they were um, born in a little warmer season so that's not as much of a concern but if it were winter time and we were having piglets, we would want to be down here immediately and make sure those piglets were nice and dry so they don't get too cold. And part of that is providing a place, a farrowing pen or hut or any type of shelter for mama. Um, now our first litter actually, she had them out in the forest, even though she had a, a pen available to her. But um, Reba here had hers in the actual farrowing pen and so they did, they stayed nice and dry. It happened overnight, so we weren't here, we didn't see it. We came down the next morning and they were all huddled in there eating. It was pretty cool. Next, you wanna make sure that they are warm. And to do that, we do the farrowing pen, but also we lay straw out for them. Um, that gives them a place to kind of root around and snuggle in, um, make sure that they can get warm, especially at night, because the temperatures are still dropping at night. Not crazy low anymore. Yep. but a little bit. And you kind of have to maintain that as you can see this whole area is strewn about with straw. Um, and so we've bought a little more down today to to repack in the bedding to keep that bedding nice and deep for them so that they can stay plenty warm at night. Number three, the next thing we need is colostrum or not we. <laughs> The next thing they need is colostrum. So that means mama's milk. As you can see behind us, that's not something we have to do. Mama's doing it all on her own. Those babies are going. A little side note on that is you will often have a runt, a piglet that's a little smaller. And we do have one this year that we're just kind of watching, making sure he's growing and progressing. Cause if he doesn't, um, then we probably need to do some intervention and give him some extra milk. He's down here on the very end. Cute little guy. Um, we just want to make sure he's getting enough milk. He often will get pushed off by the big guys, um, but he seems to be doing pretty well. Um, so we're just going to keep watching that. If we don't feel like he's getting enough and he's not growing, we will probably supplement with some extra milk. So these little guys need a healthy diet, which the best thing for them is to have mom's milk. In the beginning, they're eating every 30 to 60 minutes during the day and every four to six hours at night. Um, they self wean themselves, so that kind of, those timings get farther and farther apart as the weeks go on. Um, they will actually be fully weaned in four to eight weeks, which is awesome. We'll start sneaking some feed into their diet, you know, a week or two in. Um, we, we actually don't hide the feed from them, and so they do have access to mom's feed um, if they want to start experimenting with it, which is, which is fine. The other awesome thing about how we raise our pigs is they are out here um, on the hillside, and so they get to watch mama root around, and they get to practice, and I've already seen them doing it. Um, they're along the fence here where it's a little greener and, and messing around with rooting around, which is great. That's what they'd be doing in their natural habitat anyways, which is what we're trying to create or what we're trying to mimic here. The last thing um, that you can do for your piglets is um, any processing you're going to be doing. So if you're going to castrate um, your hogs, if you're planning to dock their tails or you want to tag their ears. Uh, the only thing we will be doing for our piglet is the castrating and that can happen anywhere from the first few days up until about 14 days at the latest. Um, Last time we did it too late and it's it was hard to manage. We took them to a vet to get it done and they were I think a month old at that time maybe a little bit older and the pigs are just unwieldy. So they're, they're difficult to manage and get that process done. So we do recommend getting it done early. So that for you is five things we do to help make sure we've got healthy little piglets and that they're happy out here. Can I add a bonus thing? Yeah, bonus. Bonus thing, number six. 
We lost one pig uh, of this litter and we think it's because he got suffocated or stepped on or slept on or something because um, it was an otherwise healthy pig. And um, it, it can, no matter what precautions you take, that can happen, especially when you have a litter of 12. Um, but one of the things we, we do in the design of our farrowing hut um, is to put a bump bar in. And so behind here, the piglets have a, spa a spot where they can go and sleep and rest where mama can't lay. So she's going to lay in here and the piglets can go back there. And so it, it's just a safety thing. It doesn't guarantee certainly that um, you're not going to lose a piglet because the piglets often want to be where mama is. But it does create a kind of a sectioned off space for the little baby piglets to be. Um, so that's number six. We've had several people asking questions about the balance of being an organic farm, a certified organic farm, and pest management. Um, we are not certified organic yet. We're working on that. We're submitting our papers, but we are organically managed um, leading up to that certification. And so we are dealing with that, and we do get pests. Uh, we live in Arkansas, and there are bugs in Arkansas. And so how do we manage that? And the answer is really it depends. Um, we try and manage it as naturally as we possibly can. So there are a few ways that you can, you can manage pests um, without spraying things on your crops. One is to create habitat for things that eat pests. So by having woodland spaces and high grasses, um, bird habitats, shrubs, brush, um, there's, we create spaces for natural predators to be around the garden and to come in and eat a lot of those pests. Um, another way uh, is to look at your soil health. And so we try and pay a lot of attention to our microbiology in the soil. One of the things that we just ordered last week actually was a new batch of nematodes. Nematodes are small worm-like microscopic creatures that live in the soil and feed on pests. And so they will actually go in and eat the bugs that eat the vegetables, which is great for us. So we wanna make sure we've got a healthy number of nematodes in the garden at all times, because that helps manage pests. Um, in addition to that, um, just keeping really healthy crops um, can, can keep your, your pest pressure back. But there are times, like uh, asparagus earlier this year, where we've got a pest that gets a little bit out of control and we've got to knock them back. And so we use organic certified um, approved sprays like a neem oil. The organic certified stuff is going to be um, derived generally from, from plants. Um, and we can use that um, spray on the plants um, to knock back an insect so that we can give all of our other remedies a chance to, to keep it in control. Now, when we do that, we have to be really careful because we have bees on site and we don't want to do anything that's going to impact our, our bees or any of the other beneficials um, like ladybugs that we have in our garden. And so we will go in usually around dusk, seven, eight o'clock at night. We'll do whatever foliar sprays that we need to do to knock back the bugs. Um, and we do that in such a way that it doesn't harm our bees, which is nice. By the time that the sun comes up the next day, the impact of that spray has, has lessened and it's not gonna affect any of our beneficials. Um, so that's how we manage it at Tuckaway. It's not a perfect system. Um, we're always on the lookout for things that are um, affecting our productivity. Um, inclusive right now, we've got a, um, something that's eating the top leaves on our tomato plants and we're not quite sure what it is. And so we've gotta Google around and get our books out and figure out what the heck that is so we can figure out how to get rid of it. But um, pest management is something that we'll always deal with um, but we try and deal with in as healthy and beneficial way as possible for the garden. Thanks for the questions, keep them coming. Please feel free to um, post those in the comments and we will get to them at the end of each video. Thanks again for watching.